with Korea preparing to take its first steps and under new leadership now the world's waiting to witness the country's next move to discuss what uh, may happen may not happen let's talk to the director of the Center for Political Military Analysis at the Hudson Institute Dr. Richard Bites. Dr. Good to see you. Thanks for being on the program. Now, in a recent article, you argued that uh, Kim Jong-il's policies are at the root of the North's current economic predicament, a predicament that's been going on indeed for many years. Expand on that, could you? Well, the regime has been given clear opportunities to change in the sense that Kim Jong-il has traveled around China. He's un probably aware of what uh, the progress that South Korea and other East Asian countries have made in the past few decades uh, in terms of liberalizing their economy, fearing prosperity, and so on. But they, his regime has chosen not to pursue that road, uh, he, presumably because he was concerned that an economic liberalization would risk a political liberalization and weakening of, the, of his control. So they've chosen political domination, uh, sustaining the totalitarian system, uh, even at the cost of prosperity and often the starvation of his people. And the majority, the, the majority of those sanctions initiated, of course, by the U.S. Right, it's not just sanctions that's that problem. The problem is the economic policies. I mean, they still rely on communes. I mean, they use, they use the kind of system that the Soviet Union had in the 30s and China had in the 50s and 60s, this very outmoded economic uh, system which we now know does not work. And, but it does ensure political control over the, the peasantry uh, and it allows them to extract resources from the people which they can use to pay off the regime, supporters in the military and so on. All right, Richard, well, I get the message that, 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 that um, you know, you, you, you don't think that system was a very good system. But, um, you know, should the West have been trying to deal with it in a different way rather than um, in, installing these sanctions that I was just talking about, et cetera, et cetera? And the way that it's dealt with North Korea, should, should it have been a different game plan? Well, I think that you could fault the, the United States and some of the other countries for the way they dealt with the in, uh, incipient nuclear program of North Korea. We know that it's had program for several decades, uh, but there was a time early on where it might have been stopped or delayed if it, the country hadn't felt so threatened. But because of the way what happened in the United States in 9-11 and the Iraq invasion and so on, uh, it was a combination of frightening the regime and not paying sufficient attention to what was going on in Korea that allowed it to become possibly a nuclear weapon armed state. I mean, it, they, they have a, they've exploded nuclear devices. It's not clear if they have a nuclear arsenal, but still it's now a much more dangerous country than it was. So should America, for instance, have been trying to work closely and, and, and better with it from the start regarding the nuclear uh, issue, which has been one of the big cruxes of the, uh, of the arguments all the way along the line? I mean, if you wind the clock back, I gather, back to 94, if I remember correctly, um, there was a, a crucial 1994 nuclear energy agreement with Pyongyang, but that was reneged on. Well, the problem, of course, was that the reason we ended up with that deal was because in 1992 it became clear that the North Koreans were cheating on their agreement with the International Atomic Energy and were pursuing a nuclear weapons program. And so we got to a state where the, uh, the, the Clinton administration was considering going to war with North Korea. And, but instead, as you recall, President Carter went there and they worked out a deal. And it's not clear, I mean, both sides didn't implement everything. The mm -hmm. North Koreans are, claim they didn't get the economic and other compensation they expected. The, uh, the other powers in the United States claim that North Korea didn't totally stop its nuclear program. So perhaps the deal could have been struck in a bit more stringently. But I think most people would have been happy if that deal had stayed. And, and, we're, and because it broke down, we would end up with a more unfortunate situation. That's the past. Let's just quickly look forward. Kim Jong-un, now um, the guy uh, that we think will be in charge, um, he's inexperienced. Is there a danger that that inexperience may be taken advantage of by the military? Yes, I think that he's got a big problem. If his father had lived maybe another five, six more years, that would have given him time to ensure that he could have succeeded him, gained enough authority, enough experience to be looked upon. But what we have now is the father is dead. He still has some family members supporting him. 
But if you're a 70-year-old general in North Korea, you, you know, you've, maybe you fought the Americans, maybe you've done other things, to want to place your country's fate in the hands of a 20-plus-something-year-old uh, youngster is not very appealing. So I suspect we're going to end up with a contested succession and that can either lead the, con the, the country to focus inward, or as we saw in 2010, it could have a negative react, uh, encounter for all of us. Like we are all going to be threatened by missile launches, nuclear saber rattling, and so on. Story we're keeping a very close eye on. Thanks for your comments. Much appreciated. Dr. Richard Weitzer, senior fellow and uh, director at the Center for Political Military Analysis at the Hudson Institute. Thanks.